Hi, in this session I'm going to cover how to create a bump chart. Now a bump chart is essentially a line chart, but what it does is it charts a rank over time. So for example, in this example, let's just say I have some sales data for three items over 12 months here, and they are ranked each month, which has the highest sales. For example, in January, item one has the highest sales, February, item three has the highest sales, and it charts it throughout a time period. And so that's what a bump chart essentially does, is it charts not the quantitative number, but the rank of items. You may see this uh, on the web for just two time periods, and that's more of what Edward Tufte would call a slope graph. But uh, a what I would say that a bump chart charts a longer period of time, and also it's probably a good idea not to rank too many items because it will really look like spaghetti and it's really hard to measure things. But if you have a few items, probably from three to seven, it would still look okay. So let me show you how this is done. So let me take this table up here. Let me go at select it, control C to copy, go into the other sheet here, control V to paste. And I'm also going to take this table, the headers in this table. Actually, I can just probably do that. Just take, the, take it from here. Let me go ahead and copy this, control C to copy, and then control V to paste. And these items, control C to copy, control V to paste. You'll notice that every action that I do almost here, like it cl mouse clicks, the numbers change here. And that's basically because I have a formula here that's looking at random numbers between 100 and 1,000. So anytime I do a copy paste, some kind of commands, or if I just press the F9 key or go under formulas and click calculate now, you'll see that the numbers change. So what I want to do to get a rank is I have to use another formula. And basically the chart is based off of this table, not this table. This table is going to have a rank formula that is going to rank the items, the range for each month. So I'm going to select this whole area here. And in this first cell selected, so I'm going to go ahead and put the formula here. So the formula is actually called a rank formula. I'm going to type in rank and then open parentheses. And what I would want to do is I want to rank this number. I want to rank this first cell, and it will go accordingly to the second cell, third cell here. But since I'm in this cell here, item 1, January 1st, I'm going to select that cell. And I want to rank this range of cells from B2 to B4. So basically, it will rank 1, 2, and 3. What I want to do also is make sure that once I copy it over, the cell references 2, 3, 4 stay the same. Um, it's, also, it's just, in, in, in this instance, it's not really going to matter too much, but it's just kind of good practice. So what, what you want to do is press the F4 key, and that's going to change the absolute relative references. It basically put a dollar sign in front of the letter or the number. What you want to do is have the dollar signs in front of the number. So it stays within that particular uh, row. So this is going to stay in row 2, and uh, that's when it moves over here, it'll go to C2, 4, this will go to D2, 4. And you'll see that once I press Control, Enter. So what? why do I need to press Control, Enter? Well, basically what it does is when I press Control, Enter, it will actually copy the formula throughout the whole cell. If I just did it for just one cell, I'd have to copy it down here and then copy it over there manually. But you'll see when I, when I press Control, Enter, Basically, that formula has copied across the cells, across the cells on to the right and bottom. So you see, if I go down here, the rank it's looked at, it's looking at B3, and you see the dollar sign stay the same B2 and B4. But if I go over here, you'll see that it goes to C2, C4. This is going to reference to C3, which is item two here. So that's just a little shortcut to incorporate formulas across a range of cells. I'm also going to format this a little bit more just because I like to make it look a little bit nicer here. Let me go ahead and put the borders in there. So once that's done, I'm going to use this table to create the graph. So once I'm, I can select anything anywhere in the table and go under Insert and Insert a line chart. Just a 2D line chart will do. And you'll see that now it pretty much looks like what we had in the other tab. And all I need to do now is kind of format it a little bit. What I'm going to do is, let me just go ahead and cover this and format it while as is. I'm going to take off these grid lines. Select it, press delete. I'm also going to put the legend at the bottom. And go under there and under layout, legend at the, oops, not the top, at the bottom. And also, I want to make sure that this particular axis, it only shows 
the rank of three, one, two, and three. So I'm gonna select that, right click it, and go into Format Axis, and then have the minimum at, I'm gonna keep the minimum at zero, but then the, the maximum, I'm gonna keep it at three. Right, so it's gonna show one, two, and three. What I also wanna do is make sure the major units are at intervals of a whole number, not decimal. So I'm gonna change that to one. So I'll click Close, and you'll see now that the first place here, the second place is here, and the third place is here. So depending on how you like to see where your first place is, you might want to have the first place on top because we want to maybe when you're talking about where an item is, if it's at the top place, you kind of think visually it should be at the top. So one should be up there at the top. So what we can do is we can change that. And also maybe we don't want to see a zero. There's really not a zero place in this setting. We only have three, a rank of three, one, two, or three. So what I need to do is select the axis again, right click and go under format axis, and check off this box where it says values in reverse order. So that's going to turn the values in reverse order, basically flip it. And if we don't want that zero, because we're really not counting any zeros, I can just go into number and go under custom, and create a custom format. I've already created this previously, so what it is is I need to have the numbers show up for positive numbers. This will be a custom number format for positive numbers. This will be a custom format for negative numbers. And you see there's a there's like no space in between these two semicolons. The semicolons are the separators. So basically it's this is how the number will look for positive, this is how the number will look for negative, and basically I don't want the number to show up for a zero. So that's what it's doing. So once I select that and click close, you've noticed that the zero disappeared. And we have our bump chart. So the rest of it is just more more formatting visually to make it look more aesthetically pleasing. I can go into design, select a, a nice shape here, and maybe make this a little bit smaller to fit the table here. And basically now I have my bump chart. One more thing is you might want to put a access title here. After the chart is selected, we can go under layout, go to access title, and we want to have our title here. And I can just put in rank. And then the, if that's too close, I can just move the chart a little bit, move it over here a little bit, and move this, this title out here a little bit. So we have our rank, first, second, third. You can see that item number two has been around a little bit since March and it goes down and uh, at the end we see item three comes out on top. So basically the bump chart is there to show a rank of items over time. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.